Hey TV fans, bored now back with you on this video. I'm going to be talking about Lem the Scare, episode 4. The episode is called Happy Birthday, Sweet Boy. Full spoilers from the start of this review, so halfway through this series now. And another strong episode, particularly for the Edmund side of the plot, so I'm going to start with that because it's a big episode in opening up some of his roots, his background, and again, painting quite a strong picture of why he's turned out the way he has done, and how he's had a lack of parental direction over his life, and how that has played a big role in it. So in this, he looks up his adopted parents, so his his adopted parents are a, which are a rich white family, his father or adopted father is like a successful author who produces like motivational type books and he goes to see them at the start of the episode. We find out then he hasn't seen them since he was about 12 or at least it's mentioned that's when they kind of cast him out, like disowned him because it's brought up then he had temper issues even back then and they in their own words anyway they gave him as many chances as they could and he wasn't taking those chances so they kind of disowned him and that's the opening of the episode as they're at this big event for like the father's launch of his book we also learn that not long after tossing Edmund out they adopt or they had their own child so it's again this idea of one of their own they just wanted to focus on that they didn't really want to give Edmund a chance or they didn't want to stick with him and we just it just builds up and paints this very clear picture because when Edmund walks in to this function this event he's listening to the father on headphones so he's listening to like the audio version i think of the book but certainly the father i think with the way this show is with psychology it could just be then that's in his head anyway it's it's not then he's literally listening to it but that's a big thing in the episode then his father's thoughts are consistently in his mind and is and things just spiral out of control once he's rejected at this event because he's again very unhinged very unstable when his father takes him aside because he's saying things like you know I want my own foundations and the father is saying things like yeah but sometimes some people can't be helped and he just doesn't want to know. He says, well, get yourself some help. And that's as much as he says. And But again, it's it's good in painting a picture of why Edmund has, has ended up as he is. Not on that it's like an outright excuse to turn the way he has done. But it does paint a good, a good background. Because if they hadn't had given up on him at 12 just because he had issues if they'd stuck with him because at the end of the day 12 is very young and you've adopted this person so what sort of way is that to treat them like how do you give up that easily so it shows that if they hadn't have given up with him at the time then maybe he could have went on to have like a more well-adjusted life and I think, again, it's quite a subtle way to show how, like, people from a more privileged background can have such a negative impact on the people around them who are less fortunate by not accepting them and, or just putting these, like, really impossible to live up to standards on them because it's like the rejection from them have had such a negative impact on Edmund and another thing this episode shows is then it has led to further rage issues with him and that it has also led to him 
being more judgmental with others as well because at at some point he kidded well he pays for a prostitute but then he starts preaching some of his father's preachings to the prostitute and starts judging her for her choices even though he's just like hired her and again this this episode and this show is is trod a fine line between the the kind of black comedy and and the more serious stuff because although there's some uncomfortable scenes with Edmund in the episode again it it does have those like black moments like those humor moments sort of spring those darker humor moments sprinkled in anyway I'll say so things are about to get out of hand with the hooker And she, to try and stop him from doing anything too extreme, like seduces him or tries to seduce him, says, hey, let's let's do what you what what you paid me for, what what we're here for. And once again, that just shows a little bit of the imbalance in in society and, and that she almost to save her own life has to try and seduce a man. So it, it's it's sh- painting the picture of the lack of options when you're in that kind of role and that kind of life. And he then attacks her and, and beats her up quite badly. And it's at that point that the cops pull up and arrest him. They find the pig's mask in the back of his trunk. So they question him later. And he claims he was just out seeing the sights. They question him a little bit more. And at one point they mention the Southside Slayer. And that's a name which they've now given to this serial killer. And of course it never like fully dawned on me that maybe Edmund could be the killer. I'd, I suspect he isn't. But it, it's raised in this episode that he could be. And I think it works The satire works better with his character if he's actually not, but then maybe he's daydreaming of being the killer. Because that's what we see in this. Then he starts fantasizing when he hears the name, the, um, I think it's like the self side slayer. And he's almost getting like excited when they are like asking him and saying, You're a suspect. And he starts reading a monologue, which he's apparently done all, on all these videotapes, and uh, about the thrill of like like killing someone. And this is a clever moment because you see him doing it on the videotapes, and he suddenly snapped out of it because another police guy officer comes in and says, "You're wasting your time with this guy. It isn't him." He says, I've been watching all these different videotapes and it's just him saying the same thing over and over again. He's an actor. It was an audition. He's looking for his 15 minutes of fame. And it just calls him a nobody and and says he's not the right height anyway for the killer. I think he was shorter or taller, one of the two, but he's not the right height anyway. And then... So they cut him loose, and this once again upsets him, upsets Edmund, because it's all about the fame, and and the worst thing in his mind could be, like, just being described as a nobody. So he's had a double blow in the episode because of the way his, like, well, adopted father, like, dismissed him as well. And we see him at one point watching these family videos from a long time ago now i think this is his real family maybe but it's from like his birthday from when he was like 12 i think and that's where the episode of the title comes from and that leads to the end of the episode because he then kidnaps this guy called donovan and he's just picked him at random and it turns out he's kidnapped him so that he can force him to recite the lines from the birthday video. So it's almost like Edmund is playing the mother and he's got this other guy, Donovan, to play play him almost. And he's, he's physically forcing him to do it. And it's a really eerie scene as he's like laughing maniacally and 
almost like a torture type laugh, laugh as well. And he eventually just snaps and attacks the guy and breaks his ankle. And that's how we end the episode. So there's some really strong stuff again with Edmund in the episode. So uh, the Dawn stuff is fine as well. It is not as good, I don't think, this this episode. But she is continuing to suspect that um, Donald might be the killer. And she goes undercover and talks to his wife, pretending that she's like a cop's wife as well. And she learns that Donald was out the night the nights of the killings so that would that's something at least and she tells her new partner then she's considering him and and also says he threatened my family and that's a concern also and Joaquin the partner gives her some background and that is then there was a case a few years ago where there was suspected violence and suspected violence from Donald against another cop and it was mysteriously dropped even though there seemed to be good evidence and he did do it and he gives Dawn the name of one of the one one of the cops who was involved and, and would have information called James so she goes to see him and she presses him because at first he doesn't want to give her any information and she says my family could be in danger so she appeals to him that way. <coughs> and he does tell this pretty horrific story of how Donald was involved in brutally beating up a, a, a black kid and about how he made it, framed it so that it all looked like it was game related and that he basically threatened anyone who said any different who would rat on him and so yeah no there's this whole thing and he, he then says he at one point Donald took a razor blade to his tongue so really extreme stuff so the suspicions continue to build and later in the episode Dawn tracks Donald down to this like regular hangout and, and get together that he has as she follows him and it turns out he's with these other guys who it's implied are like crooks so that makes it look a bit iffy too because they do seem like they are crooks and <coughs> Donald catches her outside and is immediately threatening her and the other guys come around as well, so she's surrounded. It's another quite intense scene, and he questions why she's there, and she mentions she found out that he, he drove her son home and that he was maybe trying to intimidate him, and he s says, I came just to warn you to stay away from my son, and of course it's a bit more than that, but... That's something she's got on her mind also. Stay away from my son. So she makes that clear and he makes it clear that Dawn doesn't come near him anymore and also then this never happened. So he doesn't want her saying anything. And again, it's all intimidation. It's all done in a threatening sort of way or else type thing. And he's got the other guys around her as well so she eventually like walks away but they're kind of stalking her a bit from a distance as she goes to her car so and that's a well done scene also quite sort of like quite sort of intimidating scene and there's also a little bit with her mother played by Pam Greer and so she's got this box in her closet which has some sort of like significance and she has a vi she clearly feels very guilty about it and about the past because she has this visual moment where she's talking to Dawn in the bath and it, you can tell it's got this slightly off kilter feel the scene because Dawn in a very subdued way is saying ever think that you're a bad mother and the Pam Greer character thinks she's talking about her. 
and Dawn says, I'm talking about you. And she mentions the box in the closet and says, I know you're lying. And she says, nothing in the box. And she accuses her of being a lie, of lying. And that's when it turns out it's all in her head and it's just to show she's got a guilty conscience. So later on, near the end of the episode, she tells Dawn, it's a, a reveal that Dawn is actually adopted. So she isn't her biological parent and that she was taking this heart medication because of her father's condition. So, yeah, pretty big reveal. And obviously Dawn is very emotional and upset about this. And the Pam Greer character is pleading, saying, you are mine, even though not officially. I think this is the weakest scene of the episode. Like... Now, I think when we get more information in the next episode, probably, and about what's in the box, maybe, then it could all make a little bit more sense then, and, like, it'll give us some more things to chew on, but the scene itself is a bit melodramatic, like, the acting is very over the top in it, and... I just wasn't that keen on it, and and at this point, I don't know if, like, Dawn being adopted... Is, is that interesting, but we'll see where it's going, like how it's got some sort of a connection. I guess you could draw a, a bit of a comparison because her and Ron, not Ron or Edmund, are both adopted, so maybe they're doing that a little bit, and maybe there is going to be some sort of link to the characters a little more than just the way they're doing it at the moment, but... There you have it, that's the episode anyway, Lem the Scare, episode 4, still really solid stuff, so let me know your thoughts in the comments if you've seen this episode or you've been watching the show, like and subscribe as always, and one of the reasons I'm catching up with more of this is because I am doing my best of, best 5 and best sorry yeah best five film and tv shows of the year so far and that stream should hopefully be going out next week so look out for that and this is one of the ones i'm catching up in the meantime you can also support the show or the channel at patreon.com slash board now just a dollar a month to add a little bit of monetary support there is also a paypal account on the channel so you can make up or make up make a one-off donation to that as well but thanks for supporting the channel and i'll see you guys again soon goodbye